over to MP Rempel Garner for six minutes. Thank you. Mr. Marion, um, there's a news story this morning that talks about how the Toronto Dominion Bank had to pay a $6.5 million fine for um, the, the word that they, the article uses is cheating thousands of credit card companies for decades, or customers for decades. Um, and it, the article talks about um, the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada and sort of that it might be a little bit weak. I'm just wondering if your department has undertaken any sort of um, review or provided any advice about to the government about strengthening regulatory oversight in these areas, um, particularly through mandate reviews at the Bank of Canada, OSFI, or the FCAC. <coughs> If that's okay, I will answer that question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, as you know, as uh, public servants, we won't be talking about the advice we provide to the government. So, um, but but we are like the 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 department is looking always looking at ways to uh, strengthen the financial sector system, its stability, its security. Have you undertaken any review, uh, any sort of like landscape review of the adequacy of the regulator regulatory frameworks? There's actually, uh, in the summer was launched a legislative review of the financial sector. Okay. Uh, and the, co the consultation period just ended uh, in Would September and the department is currently reviewing the, the submissions. Would you be able to provide the uh, committee with um, interim documents or a summary of this, given the nature of this study that we're looking at right now? Not at the moment. Why? Like, as I said, like, the, the consultation period closed fairly recently, and uh, the department is still in the process of reviewing <coughs> the Could you provide us with a summary? Uh, like, it's... Why I'm, not? There's, there's many of you at the table. So you're saying your department can't provide a parliamentary committee with the undertakings of a legislative review? We can provide a summary of the... Well, we could share the documents for the Perfect. legislative review. So, so any of the findings you will table with this committee? Like we're still in the process of... Yes, but uh, I just want the documents so I can read them as a legislator and provide recommendations to the government. We need to go through the documents. Some of them, like, have okay, been... Okay, this is ridiculous. We, some, right? some of them we can not share like, because I, consultation I, documents... We'll do a production of documents. We'll do a production of documents. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Okay. Um, Mr. Marion, um, the European Union has regulation that limits interchange fees 0.3% for consumer credit cards and 0.2% uh, for consumer debit cards. Did you provide advice to the government that Canada should undertake similar regulations? I mean, we, in our work, uh, particularly that led to the recent agreements with Visa and MasterCard that saw the reduction of interchange fees for small but that's businesses. that's a voluntary agreement, right? It is a voluntary agreement. So did you uh, provide... Having said that, I'd qualify it as a non-regulatory agreement. It right. is an agreement, and they adhere to the agreement. They post did the fees. Did the government fees. provide a direction to your department to not pursue a regulatory framework on interchange fees and a voluntary framework instead? So we've uh, had... Uh, a number of these agreements, three sets of these agreements uh, over the years. The first set was negotiated in uh, 2014 <coughs> and brought into force uh, but, but in But there's no formal regulatory framework, correct? Uh, those requirements are not set in right. regulations, Okay, so, so did, the, did the government provide you with direction to not pursue a formal regulatory framework for interchange fees being capped at a certain level. We didn't receive any uh, direction saying that it shouldn't be done regulatorily. Um, did the government provide you any direction on ensuring or regulating or working something into the uh, voluntary framework that you talked about, the voluntary agreement with Visa and MasterCard to ensure that the savings from interchange fees would be passed on to small businesses when a payment processor is involved. So just to be clear here, uh, at the time of the fall economic statement in 2022, 
the government uh, announce its intention, one, to negotiate. So Lower, I'm running out of if, time. So I, I want appreciate to that. But at the time, the draft legislation was table concurrently with the announcement and and the announcement said if we cannot achieve this through agreement we will proceed with regulating this in, I'm, in but short I'm asking, term um, particularly and, with regard to the payment processors like stripe right has the government provided you with direction to ensure that the savings on interchange fees from the deal with visa and mastercard are actually passed down to consumers and not hoarded by payment processors. Right. So most uh, merchants that are on Interchange Plus plans are de facto receiving. But we don't know how many. Uh, we don't know how many of those. Like you, you get that talking point, but we don't actually know how many of those clients are on Interchange Plus or not. So I'm asking why? Why didn't the government, if if that was to go to small businesses, did you provide advice to the government to ensure that? those savings were not hoarded by payment processors like Stripe? We have communicated in very clear terms. Could you, the could you, could you table that communication with the, the committee? Anything written to the payment processors? So we've spoken uh, with the payment processors. That our expectation was for any rate reduction. Did you do that with Stripe? We did. Uh, can absolutely. you table that can you, last week, you said? No, I said absolutely. Okay, so you can table any emails that you've had with them. So it was done through verbal discussion, but at the same time, when? we did, uh, we communicated that certainly in uh, July of this year, and uh, I'd have to go back. With who uh, from the company? With Stripe. With who? Uh, Brian Peters, I believe, is the gentleman. Oh, interesting. Um, last question that I have. Um, and perhaps it's for Mr. Light. Um, payment processors are citing the um, increase in GST, HST, um, it, I, the change in ruling I will get into. You know what we're talking about on, on certain um, uh, fees as the reason why they can't or aren't passing the savings from the interchange fees and Visa and MasterCard along to consumers. Were you lobbied by payment? Like, did you hear a lot of feedback from payment processors that they didn't want that change to GST, HST made? Like, was that a lobbying effort within the department from on the behalf of payment processors to have GST applied to um, the fees? There was a court ruling, and then uh, I, I believe that there was a change in policy, right, to ensure that GST did apply. Um, was that something that was like heavily lobbied in your department by payment processors? Um, no, we did not heavily lobby. I put out that the tax also applied up until a 2020 court ruling. Um, in 2023, we made an amendment to um, to ensure that the tax reapplied. Right. So, but no, we did not see. Um, we did receive some communication from acquirers asking for information, but we did not receive heavy lobbying. Thank, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Garner. You. To uh, start off where uh, MP Rempel Garner ended her round of questioning with regard to the interchange fees and the tax case, that the claim by Stripe that somehow they're uniquely uh, hurt by the GST, HST uh, change, which isn't really a change as I understand it. So maybe we could ask, uh, uh, tackle that part first. The GST being applied uh, this year isn't new, is it? It was just they got a 12-month reprieve, essentially, and, but they're paying what they were paying before. Yeah, there's been no change. This is a, a long-standing policy that's been in place since the GST was introduced in 1991. It was well understood. Um, banks uh, are often uh, ambitious when it comes to challenging laws, and they took a swing at it. They lost at the tax court. They won at the federal court of Canada or the federal court of appeal. Uh, we introduced legislation to unwind that uh, decision, which was contrary to longstanding policy, and the tax was uh, reintroduced. So it's not a new tax. It's so not it's a, a new cost. It's not a new tax. No. And it's not a tax that applies strictly to Stripe, is it? No, it applies to all acquirers. It applies to all of them. So, so far, they're the only company that I'm aware of that has come out and said that they're not going to uh, apply the reduction, although a number of other providers have been silent. Uh, are you aware, is there any other company 
that is providing uh, these interchange services, these processing services, that is saying they will not pass it on? I'm not aware of any others. And what has the department done to reverse their perspective on it? Uh, well, we've had many conversations. In fact, this was uh, quite a hot topic, if you recall, back in uh, Budget 2023. We had a lot of conversations with industry. We had a lot of conversations with MPs and parliamentarians, and uh, this should be a settled issue by now. So there can be only one or two reasons why Stripe is refusing to pass it on. Either they're not as good at doing their job as their competitors and don't have as uh, robust the technology that allows them to absorb this, or they're just gouging consumers. Do you have any idea which it is? Well, I can't speak to Stripe's business practices, but what I would say is that the GST on... The network fee is a very, very small cost um, as a percentage of the cost. So they have many costs they need to absorb. So it could be labor costs, technology costs, you name it. Um, so to blame not passing this on to one small input to their overall costs uh, would seem to us to be a bit disingenuous. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure which finance official to pose this one to, but I want to talk about Interact. Uh, you may have been aware that we've had a little chat here around all these fees of Interact. We had a board member here in committee who didn't seem to know what the pricing was of the company that he is a board member of, which shocks me because every company I've been a board member of, I know what our pricing structure is, so I'm not sure how truthful he was. But, but in the end of the day, the, the, the e-transfer uh, fees range from uh, $0.06 cents to $0.43, cents, apparently. And apparently, if you are... Uh, on the board of Interact, and in particular, if you're a co-chair of Interact, you're one of the two companies, coincidentally, that gets the six cents. And if you're not there, you have to pay the 43 cents as a uh, provider. So uh, has the department at all looked into the anti-competitive behavior of Interact and the way it treats other financial institutions in the pricing? Thank you for the question. We do work with Interact. Uh, matters related to competition is one that we defer to the Competition Bureau. <coughs> and so to the specifics of your question, I think those would be better opposed to them. But when you're forming public policy, and I served eight years in a minister's office back in a long time ago, but, but uh, uh, and the department's always working with the minister to look at issues, uh, public policy issues, and certainly the Department of Finance, the Minister of Finance, should be concerned with competition in financial services, and particularly in fees, fees that are gouging consumers. So are you telling me that the Minister and the Department have never looked into this anti-competitive behavior by Interact that gives preferential treatment to the co-chairs of the board and treats everybody else differently and gouges them at a 98% margin difference? So uh, we do, again, work with Interact. There are a number of areas of interest uh, with respect to uh, pricing and so on. It's, we haven't entertained uh, agreements uh, in, terms of, in terms of setting certain pricing for Interact. It's not something that stakeholders have raised with us. In fact, merchants uh, that I deal with well, the, the stakeholders have to raise something for you to look at an issue. I mean, but the issue here is that if you're being charged $1.50 on each end of the transaction, that's $3. And Royal Bank and TD are paying $0.06. Cents. That's a monstrous amount of profit. And the department hasn't looked into that. And the, par the department hasn't looked into, I also take it, the re return on equity percentages on credit card business. I worked at a bank. I know that the bank I worked at, though, the return on equity was 52% on the credit card business. So their, their defense of this industry is BS uh, in terms of the fact that generally the return for the entire bank is 10 to 12, 13% is their target. The department doesn't look into any of these issues, doesn't put forward policy uh, policy to try and correct when you have usury uh, uh, returns on credit cards or you have usury returns by two, if not the four key banks on charging on Interact? You don't look at those issues at all? We look at a number of issues. Uh, and, uh, and thank you for the question. Uh, with respect to Interact, 
uh, as I was going to say, merchants uh, do value the, the services that they provide and, and want to maintain their access to interact, uh, whether it's uh, payment receivable through e-transfer or payment uh, expediency through e-transfer as well as uh, their debit service offerings. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Van Bynen, la parole est... Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm just, just kind of intrigued, uh, Department of Finance here, about what your, sometimes what your policy objectives actually are. Like, what are the guidelines, or I guess what are the guardrails that you guys, that you guys have in place for your department on setting your policy? Like, it just... When you, when you compare what's going on in like the European Union and some other countries like that, they've been very aggressive on setting you know, rate cuts and setting levels. They're way down here and we're way up here. Why is that? Thank you for the question. I, I think that you're referring to the interchange rates in this particular case. Yeah. Right. Um, and so for Canada, the latest uh, round of agreements to secure reductions in interchange rates for small businesses. We're really looking at how can we reduce meaningfully the interchange rates paid by small businesses, number one. Number two, let's make sure that those reductions aren't accompanying uh, increases for other businesses. And number three, we wanted to uh, make sure that consumers, Canadians, uh, uh, reward programs were protected as they value those programs quite significantly. And so uh, those were some of the, the objectives of going into the agreements. And then uh, it's how do we want to structure this? How best do we deliver on those? Okay, so I just looking at multiple things that we have heard in this committee so far. Uh, we look at the credit card companies, for example. All of their interest rates are virtually identical. Uh, sure, there's multiple players in the market, but there is, there's no true competition. If there was, there would, there would be aggressive uh, rate reductions happening. Uh, so why, why is the government of Canada's policy not seeking to get those rates, to get that competitive nature restored where we see that rate reduction happening so that consumers and business get a better, get a better uh, outcome here? I mean, it, it's a good uh, question in terms of uh, what we're observing in terms of interest rates, for instance. Uh, and and I can attest that there is quite significant amount of competition in terms of... Well, not of, really. It's not in, really because they, they're all the exact in, same. In terms of the... Well, uh, uh, agree that they're all the same and... I, I'd also mention that the gas prices in my neighborhood are all the same as well, uh, but they, they compete fiercely with one another. Uh, well, if they did, their rates would be way lower. Actually, they don't because they're literally the integration of the market. <laughs> uh, but, but they do compete fiercely on their uh, credit card portfolios. Yeah, with, I mean, but I mean, like, the, re the rewards are the exact same, too. They all offer generally the same thing. In fact, multiple banks offer the exact same company as the, as the beneficiary of the rewards, like Aeroplan or Avion or all these different things. But um, anyways, Mr. Chair, I just want to take the last uh, couple of minutes here. Uh, I have a motion I would just like to move. It's in relation to the study, the study that we are doing, so it's within scope here. Um, so that... This is the motion here, um, that in relation to the committee's ongoing study of credit card practices and given various departments have refused to answer questions and produce documentation related to the committee's ongoing study, the committee therefore order the department to produce A, Honourable Michelle Rempel garners request for any briefing notes and summary documents prepared by the department related to the Government of Canada's consultation process on reducing interchange fees including any and all written submissions received by stakeholders. B, MP Jean-Denis Garon's request for all copies of Visa MasterCard's initial offer to reduce interchange fees, including any and all counteroffers by the department, as well as any and all email exchanges related to these negotiations between Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. C, MP Brian Massey's request for any advice letters or memorandums provided to the minister on the matter of reducing interchange fees or credit card reductions more broadly, and that these documents be produced to the committee within 14 days following the adoption of this motion, unredacted and in both official languages. 
Thank you. Merci, monsieur. Beaucoup.